doing problem one on section 4.1. <coughs> There's five parts here, so I'm going to try to squeeze these in as best as I can. So um, we've got 1a. The function given is uh, f of x is equal to 3x to the fourth power minus 6x to the third x squared over 8 and plus 5. <coughs> okay, so right away, uh, the best thing to do with this situation here is when we've got a, a, just a number in the denominator is to rewrite the function so that that number becomes a, a, just a coefficient in front of the x term. So I'm going to rewrite the function as 3x to the fourth power minus 6x to the third. And then again, this 8 in the denominator, I can write this as 1 eighth x squared. Same thing, and then plus 5. So like, that's really the best thing, way to deal with uh, just constants in the denominator like that. OK, so then we can take the derivative of this using the power rule. So as we saw before, this derivative will be uh, take the power, multiply it by the 3. So we're going to get 12x to the third power. And then for the next one, bring the 3 down, multiply by the 6. So we get minus 18x second power. Uh, the third one, 2 times 1 eighth is going to be 1 fourth. So we'll get 1 fourth x to the, or just x to the first power. And then the derivative of any constant is 0. So that derivative is just going to be gone, 0. OK, then part, uh, part b, um, the function that we're given, y equals 8 square root x plus 6x to the 3 fourths power. So again, first thing we'll do is just go ahead and write that root as a power. So we're going to get 8x to the 1 half power plus 6x to the 3 fourths power. I'm going to try to squeeze the derivative right here. So then the derivative will be dy dx. Power rule, take the 1 half, put it in front. 1 half of 8 is 4, so we're going to get 4x. Lower the power by 1, we'll get a negative 1 half power. Uh, for this one, we'll multiply the 3 fourths by the, by the 6th. That's going to give us 18 over 4, which is the same as 9 over 2. So we'll get 9 halves x to the minus 1 fourth power. Lower that 3 fourths by 1, we get negative 1 fourth. And again, if you wanted to write this with roots, uh, with positive exponents or roots, you, you could do that. I'm not going to do that here, so, so we can save some room here for part C. Um, function we're given, y equals 6 over x to the fourth, 7 over x to the third, uh, 3 over x and root 5. So again, the first thing that we want to do is just rewrite this so that all of these, all these functions are actually power functions. <coughs> so we can write this as 6 x to the negative 4 minus 7x to the negative 3 plus 3x to the negative 1 plus root 5. The root 5 really doesn't matter because it's a constant anyway. <coughs> then the derivative here dy dx, power rule, take the negative 4, put it in front, we get minus 24x to the minus 5 power, lower it by 1. Multiply the minus 3 by the minus 7, we get plus 21x to the minus 4 power, uh, minus 3x to the minus 2 power, and then the, the derivative of that, of course, is a constant. So again, if you wanted to write this with positive exponents, you could put the x to the fifth in the denominator, the x to the fourth, the x squared in the denominator. Um, next one, uh, g of x is part d. g of x is equal to uh, x to the third minus 4x over root x. So I'm going to combine a couple of steps here. Remember, the first thing we want to do is change that root to a power, and then we're going to split that up as two different fractions. So we get x to the third over x to the 1 half minus 4x over x to the 1 half. OK, and then we'll use the properties of exponents. If I've got x to some power divided by x to another power, we subtract the powers. So that's going to give us x to the 3 minus 1 half. So that's 6 halves minus 1 half. 
5 halves minus, and again, here we've got a first power over a 1 half power, so that's going to be 4 x to the 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So that's rewriting the function so that it is a power function. I'm going to try to squeeze the derivative here so that we can uh, have room for the last one. So g prime here is um, power rule, 5 halves x to the, um, that's not going to be a negative. That's going to be, uh, if I subtract 1 from that, that's 3 halves. So let me just change that to a 3 over 2. And then um, the next part here, minus, if I put the 1 half in front, multiply that by the 4, I get 2x to the negative 1 half power. So there, this is the derivative of the function we started with. So we had to rewrite it so that it was power functions. Then we took the derivative using the power rule. OK, the last one. Um, Part E, we've got a, a binomial squared. So again, this doesn't look like a power function as it's written. So we're going to have to do something to it before we can actually take that derivative. In this case, what we're going to want to do is square it. So that just means to write this thing two times. So we get 8x squared minus 4x, 8x squared minus 4x. Yeah, notice that when you square a binomial like this, it's not just going to be the first one squared plus the second one squared. It's the whole thing multiplied by the whole thing. So you got to use FOIL on this thing. <clears throat> the first term will get a 64x to the fourth. Um, the outer term will give us minus 32x to the third. And then there'll be another minus 32x to the third from the inner term. So that's going to be minus 64x to the third. And then the last term will give us plus 16x squared. OK, so now, that now it's definitely written as a power function, so we can find the derivative k prime, which will be power rule 4 times 64, or that 6, uh, 240 plus 16, 256, I guess. 256 x to the third power. And multiply uh, 3 by 64 there, I get 180 plus 12. So that's 192. So minus 192 x squared. And then here, the 2 times the 16 gives us 32. So 32 x. And then lower that by 1 as well. So there's the derivatives of all the functions that you see on problem 1. 4.1.